This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to determine the equation of an ellipse given its foci and its vertices. Now, before we jump into this video, I really have to implore the viewer, you, to do a whole bunch of problems with the ellipses. Uh, when you understand how ellipses work, and you do that by doing several problems, you know, more than one or two, you got to really get the flavor and the and how all of this gels together, how the center is used to find the vertices, how the center is used to find, and, and the vertices are used to find the foci. You get a good understanding of what the major axis is, what the minor axis is, what the semi-major axis is, what the semi-minor, and so on. Okay, so keeping in mind that you have probably done that, and if not, please go back to Math Guide and check out our quiz. We have an interactive quiz that will throw a problem at you, and it'll ask you to find the vertices and the foci and the center and all that jazz, and it'll check you. It'll tell you whether you're doing it correctly or not. Okay, so try it. I'll put that link down in the, uh, in the message, or at least down in the body of this uh, video. Okay, so this way you can click on that and you can try that. Okay, so keeping in mind that you now know how uh, ellipses work, I'm going to show you a more difficult type of problem. Okay, see this problem, I'm giving you foci and vertices. And from that, we're going to build the entire equation. All right, let's, let's get started on that. So uh, when you do these problems, all of these ellipses look the same. They have a couple things being squared. There are two fractions that are being added, and it's the sum is equal to 1. So I know that. I, I basically know what it is, and I, I kind of know the format. This is kind of like what they say in vertex form. So if I place this down, I'm going to start putting in numbers. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do to help you get this equation is plot this data. Okay, so let's take this information and let's take the negative 1, 6 and let's put a point there. Let's put a negative 1, negative 2. Let's put a negative 1, 7, which is, yep, slightly off our grid. No big, no big deal there. Okay, um, and I'll put a little F here by the foci. Okay, F here by the foci. Let's see, negative 1, negative 3 is a vertex. All right, now um, you should know that, of course, um, our ellipse is going to be elongated this way. Now, okay, don't expect me to make a good picture here. Um, yeah, it looks like a lemon, you know, horrible, laughable even. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, how do I know that this ellipse is elongated vertically, right? How do I know it's tall and skinny and not uh, short and fat? Uh, well, I know that because the uh, foci are going vertical, right? They're going up and down. So that tells us that it is more vertically stretched than it is horizontally stretched. So that's how I know it looks like that. Now, I really don't know how wide it is. At this point, I don't know if it's a little bit wider than this. Um, so I can't really draw it. Okay, I can't really draw this, not yet. All I could do is use this information to start piecing together what the equation looks like. Okay, first of all, I need the center, right? Everything's based off of knowing what the center is. So to get the center, I am going to look halfway between the foci. The, fo it, the center's got to be right in the middle of the foci. So if I just look at the foci here for a moment, I could see that these two points are eight units apart, right? So go from six to negative two, that's a distance of, of eight units. So Half of that distance has to be, let's see, half of eight, yeah, four. So I know if I go from this focus, I go down four units, one, two, three, four, I'm at the center. And it does work, because if I go four more units down, one, two, three, four, I'm at the other focus. So therefore, I know I nailed this. I know I've got the correct center. Now if you look, oh yeah, before I move on, now that I know I have my center at negative 1, 2, just by looking at the graph, I can see it's negative 1, 2. 
uh, I'm going to put my numbers in. So the opposite of this x value goes here, so I'm going to put a plus 1. The opposite of this y value goes here, so I'm going to put a minus 2. So one, two of our numbers are already in our formula. We need two more numbers, those two denominators to go. Well, we're going to get the uh, one of the denominators right now. If you look at the distance from the center to the vertex, that distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That distance is 5. That is the semi-major axis. So if you take the semi-major axis and square it, you're going to have one of these denominators. Okay, which one is it? Well, since I'm going vertical, that's got to be under the y, because y is a vertical variable. So 5 squared is 25. It goes right there. See, this is the number right here. That denominator, that's the tough one. See, so far what we've done, you're, you have to admit that none of this has been uh, a taxing uh, calculation. All of this has been actually quite simple. It's just a lot of critical thinking and knowledge of how conic sections specifically how uh, ellipses work. All right, so let's get this number underneath the x. Now, the way we do this is by using the focal formula. So let me write it down. So the focal formula is a squared minus b squared underneath a radical. Okay, I didn't draw that so well. The whole radical should be way under there. Okay, so um, I know that I've got this formula, and if I just plug in numbers into this formula, I should be able to get my other number. Okay, what are some numbers here that I'm going to use? Well, it's always the big number minus the small number. Since the y, or uh, you know, this value, 25, is the larger number, and I know that because it, the major axis is going vertical, that means the 25 has to go first. It's the larger of the two numbers, and you got to put it first. You put it second, we're going to get a whole different answer, a wrong answer. Uh, okay, what's the um, focal length? The focal length is the distance between the center and the focus. So if you look at that distance, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, a distance of 4. So therefore, I put 4 in for the focal length. All right, what I want to do now is figure out what b squared is. Yes, see that number right there is b squared. So that's why I need to solve this equation that I have, and I'll be able to get b squared. All right, so this is going to be not as bad as you think, because if I square both sides to get rid of the square root, I get 16 on the left. I get 25 minus b squared on the right. Now, don't do a lot of math here. Just think. 25 minus some value is equal to 16. 25 minus 9 is equal to 16. That number right there has got to be 9. Therefore, b squared is 9, and that's the number that goes right there. Okay, so now I can get rid of this. I now know what b squared is. It is no longer an unknown. I can do a little bit better job of erasing that. So now I have the equation right there. So all it took was a little bit of ingenuity and knowledge of ellipses and the way they're graphed. All right, so I'd like you to check out more of our instructional videos at MathGuy, so please go to MathGuy.com. I also have interactive quizzes, hundreds of them, and of course text-based lessons. Take care.